Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. I hope you had a great day. Let's take a look at some new malicious compliance stories where people conform to the letter but not the spirit of a request. The first story is called Playing by the Rules. So I live in South Korea, but I work for a US company in South Korea. Because I work for an American company and am one of the few employees of my company that is American in South Korea, my company doesn't issue me this letter that basically says I'm employed in South Korea. This means I have restrictions on my Korean bank account. I can only withdraw 250,000 won, about $216 a day from an ATM, and if I go in person to a teller, I can only withdraw 1 million won, about $860 a day. This normally doesn't present a problem for me. I also can't have a debit or credit card, I get a bank book, which is kinda like an electronic checkbook that's a physical thing you carry. FYI, I use my American bank for most of my day-to-day -day spending. But I did it once, I signed a lease for a new apartment and the deposit was 10 million won, about $8,700. Yes, this is normal for Korea. So I transferred the money from my American bank to my Korean bank and I went to the bank in person to transfer the money to my landlord. I get there and the teller tells me I can only transfer 1 million per day. My first idea was to ask my landlord if she'd be cool with me transferring her 1 million won a day for 10 days, but she doesn't like that idea. So I'm sitting there arguing and the bank manager comes out. He's a nice enough man and speaks good English. Basically, he says because of the type of my account, there is no way I can transfer more than a million a day. I need this money and I'm thinking and the light bulb goes off in my head. If I close my account, do I get my money? Yes, we would give you the cash. And if I close my account, can I open a new one? Of course. Is there a waiting period after closing my account to open a new one? No. Fantastic, please close my account. Sure, I will need your bank book and we will destroy it. So I hand in my bank book and they destroy it, sign some papers to close the account and the bank manager gives me all the money in the account in an envelope. Anything else I can help you with today? I smile and pull out my passport. Yes, I'd like to open a new bank account. The bank manager looks at me and it dawns on him what I just did. He laughs, shakes his head and goes, sure, no problem. I opened a new account, deposited 10,000 won and left with my deposit in my pocket. The next story is called The Swimsuit. I, 24 male, hosted a friend from college, also 24 male, that I haven't seen since before 2020. Shortly after he arrives, we head to our local bar and grill in our neighborhood. We decided to do the 15 to 20 minute walk instead of drive, so we didn't have to worry about leaving the car. I was joined by my roommate, 25 male, and also a good friend, and his newish girlfriend, 22 female, who I don't know that well, but I have always had friendly encounters with when we have hung out. At the bar, drinks flowed freely, and my friends seemed to really hit it off with our crew. We stayed longer than expected, and it was fully dark, and we were well buzzed by the time we decided to walk home. It was still hot outside when we got to the apartment complex, so my roommate suggested that we hit the community pool. The pool and hot tub were technically closed for the night. But it isn't too close to any of the units and generally no one cares if you are responsible and don't break glass bottles or anything like that. After debating whether to head back to our place to change first, my roommate insisted that we are all friends here and that we could all just go in the pool in our underwear. Everyone agreed on this, although my roommate's girlfriend announced, you guys have fun with that and proceeded to launch next to the pool on one of the deck chairs and scroll Instagram. We strip down and hop in the pool and are having a pretty good time just messing around. After some time had passed, my roommate was chatting with his girlfriend and then quietly approached me afterward. Apparently his girlfriend was very uncomfortable with me wearing just briefs in the pool, both my roommate and my friend were wearing boxer briefs. She wanted me to go all the way back to the apartment and change into a swimsuit. I initially protested and said it was his idea in the first place and how everyone was in their underwear and none of us cared and what's the difference, it's not like my underwear was white or see-through or anything like that. My roommate asked me to go change for him as a favor so that it didn't turn into an issue between him and her. I was mad but decided to let it go for the time being. When I got back to the apartment, an idea popped into my head when it occurred to me that I still had a swimsuit from when I used to swim on the club team in college. So I put on my speedo and head back out, armed with another six pack for the boys and only a t-shirt, towel wrapped around my waist and flip flops. 
I get back to the pool, announce I had changed into my swimsuit as requested, drop the towel and ditch the tea and launch into our wicked cannonball into the pool. I can see a wry smile on my roommate's face but nothing else was said about my choice of attire. We go in the pool and a few minutes later she announces that she's tired and is going to bed. We stay out late including more beers and laughs in the hot tub while the girlfriend was asleep at our place. The last story is called Not Allowed to Do Work for Other Officers. Decades ago, the 90s, I worked as an information researcher for a high commissioner in an international organization. I had a junior position and was 26. During the first years, people at the head office started to reach out to me as well for little requests as I prepared myself to be thorough and fast. Someone in the head office took a liking to me, so when a temporary opening at head office required a process analyst, which I had studied as well, I was formally requested for segment. The high commissioner complied and off I went to a different country. The relationship between the head office and the field offices was strained for various reasons and the red tape was worse than the Byzantine Empire. Now the project wasn't that interesting, record internal processes in HR and point out flaws and less of a challenge than initially presented. But it gave me wonderful insight into the workings of the head office, who decided what and where to go when you wanted an answer or a decision. Before long, the office of the HC started to direct requests to me if they needed anything from the head office without invoking the dreaded red tape. As a junior, this was a definite boost for my self-confidence. A couple of weeks into my job, another international office called me. They had received guidance from the HC that if they wanted anything done at head office, they should call me. So in the time that followed, I would regularly receive calls asking me to arrange all sorts of things, which I did. In the meantime, I'm still working on my project. Remember, I'm still a junior. And then it all went peer-shaped. On a Monday morning, I received a call from the policy director of the HC. There will be a ministerial conference in the town of the head office, but there seems to be some doubt over the hotel arrangements. If they fax me the details, would I be so kind to go to the hotel this afternoon and talk it through with the general manager? Sure, so I take the afternoon off and arrange everything. The next morning, I'm called into the office of my department director, who is furious. My manager is standing next to him, with her arms crossed. I am not allowed to sit down, and I'm asked where I was yesterday afternoon. Seeing no problems, I tell them about the call and the hotel. The director then tells me in no uncertain terms that I am not allowed to do work for other offices once on the payroll for this office. If I am to lift one finger, there would be grave consequences. Furthermore, pay will be deducted for my absence yesterday. I managed to get in that I took an afternoon off and did it in my own time, but they deem it unpaid leave anyway. In comes the malicious compliance. Dejected, I sit at my desk, unable to fathom what I have done wrong. Later that day, I get two calls, one from the high commissioner and one from the other office. I inform them that by instruction of the director, I have been forbidden to do any tasks not related to my current position. Please go through regular channels. You can imagine how both reacted. The red tape in this organization is legendary. I get more calls from even higher ups in both offices, leading me to bend the rules just a teeny bit. I mean, it is more of a guideline, wouldn't you say? I hold my ground and suggest they need to clear it with my manager or the director, but that my hands are tied. The next day, the process repeats. The political director calls concerning the conference. Can I contact translators and go through the flight plan of the HC and staff with the limo company? No. What? And I repeat my mantra. He gets furious and starts shouting, not at me, but the general incompetence of head office with some choice words about certain directors there. The next morning, my manager's secretary walks into my office. She is nervous. Please report to the secretary general's office immediately. The tone lets me know something horrible is afoot, so I actually ran there. The SG's secretary greets me with a malicious grin. Oh, you have created quite a mess, have you? I still don't know what's going on, but could see my immediate termination in a not so distant future. As I walk in, there's the secretary general, my director and my manager. The secretary general is fuming. He explains to me that a formal complaint is being prepared by the high commissioner and the head of the other office over the lack of service from the head office whereby the High Commissioner had even hinted that the department was trying to derail a ministerial conference. This is all due to the fact that it had come to the attention that people have been directly instructed not to assist the two offices. Is this true? 
Yes, I've been told that I am not allowed to perform any duties for any other office while on the payroll of this office. With me present, the Secretary General looks at both and asks, which idiot has decided this? The director states that he decided this based on the information from my manager. The Secretary General tells him, well, this morning I've been shouted at by the High Commissioner and the Head of Office from the other office, and I don't like being shouted at. He looks at me and tells me, whenever you receive a request from those offices, I want you to execute these with priority and diligently. This overrides your assignment. If there's any discussion, refer to my office. However, you will report to me weekly on the nature of these requests. My office will confirm this in writing. I nod, say thank you and get out of there. Inside, shouting ensues. The secretary winks at me with a broad smile. A right mess it is. My head is spinning. Part of my work now falls under the direct supervision of the secretary general. From that time on to the end of my segment, I basically could do whatever I wanted. I attended the conference at the personal request of the High Commissioner and did everything that was asked of me. I continued to receive calls from the various offices and ran errands for the Secretary General's office. I even went to other countries to have meetings there at the request of offices. I finished the project ahead of time and became a go-to person for a lot of people, even when I returned to my own office. After I got back to my office, I received an immediate pay rise, new tasks and a number of wonderful letters of recommendation. The High Commissioner and Political Director had personally asked for them. This helped tremendously when I changed positions years later. Although the High Commissioner has long since passed, I still remember him fondly as a man who had your back, no matter how junior or lowly your position. And now it's your time to shine. Let me know what you think about the stories. Did they happen? What could have been done better? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye-bye.